you're just wrong. You're wrong. I love you. I love the Rockefeller family. I love you guys very much. They're not all of them. There's a lot of you I cannot stand, okay? <laughs> I cannot stand you. You're complete jerks, and you need to stop. I got in the car, and I have to, this is that last video. I'm on my way to pick up something real quick, and I'm, um, oh, no, that lady left her lights on. I don't think she'll be gone very long, so I think she'll be all right. But, uh, um, <laughs> oh, the lights are on, but no one's home. Um, that's funny. Guys, knock it off. Oh, man, you guys, it's neat the control and the aspects of control that we can have to try to do this. Now, there are people on one side trying to limit the access of control, limit the information, and keep manipulating you and keep the chaos going. There's another side wanting to help kind of establish a form of loving order because they want open communication and intelligence and intelligent dialogue and to stop this chaos so we can have a more orderly society, um, an intelligent society, a kingdom like Jesus is talking about. Um, now, when I got in there, you said that song, Blad Blood by Neil Sedaka and, and Elton John? The only thing good about... And then I'm sitting there, and I'm wanting to listen to the next song because it's in my room. It's one of the favorite Beach Boys play songs, you know, in my room. You know, I can go and tell my troubles, too, and all that, you know, and you can go in your apartment if you don't. <laughs> it's a surveillance age. You go tell your troubles in your room. Everybody knows. <laughs> I'm just talking. But it's funny because it's like, you know, there's no, there's no privacy. There's no love. But the reason why there's no privacy is because of all that. Yeah, that girl has a very, Jenny, stop it. I, I'm sorry. She's young. I know she's young, but she's wearing really nice pants and she has a nice butt. I didn't mean to notice. Well, I didn't mean to. I didn't know. It's, I'm, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. They wear really nice pants and have really nice butts. She could be Natalie's age. She could be Natalie's age. And so could that girl right there killing you, carrying the beer. No, she's carrying beer. Okay. All right. Jenny, shut up. Stop being such a miss psychoanalyst, Mrs. Superanalyst now. Now, I'm not connecting to you anymore. No, no, knock it off. Go away. No, why? Because you're getting annoying. Why? Because you're, well, you, are, you already would have figured that one out anyway, but you, your observation and analysis skills are, are, are really increasing, and you, it's, it's really sexy and shit, and it's like driving me nuts, because I'm, I'm gonna, okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm sorry, okay. This is like fucking torture, man. It's been torture, but now as it gets closer to the, it's even more torture. It just, I don't know. What, you're halfway there. What's halfway there? How is halfway there? What, I, I don't get halfway there. I mean, I, ooh, we're halfway there. We're living on a prayer. <laughs> you want me to sing uh, Living with a Bear? Do the fuzzy? Huh? Waka, waka, waka. I'm not going to sing Living with a Bear. No. No, I'm not doing Living with a Bear. No, it's cute. It makes the kids laugh. I'm sure it does. <laughs> oh, cool. Those lights turn out by themselves. So they leave them. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, um, uh, okay. No, I'll do, I'll do Living with a Bear later. I'll do, okay. Father, you don't live in the parks. Rangers win on strike. He's down on his luck. It's tough. So tough. <laughs> I forgot the rest of the words. <laughs> so he works at the diner all day. I can't remember. It was funny, though. But, yeah, it was and I, I'll go back. I'll listen to it again. We'll come up. With, we'll come up with our own lyrics. And we'll do the fancy voice. Waka waka. Yeah. <laughs> and hi ho. This is Kermit the. I can't do Kermit as well. I can do Grover. No, Grover makes my voice hurt, and then I can't talk. Shut up. You're not funny. You're not funny. <laughs> yeah, do Grover. Shut up. <laughs> do Grover too much. My voice hurts, and then I can't talk for a while. Do Grover. A lot of Grover. Bunches of Grover. You're, yeah, you're funny. Oh, gosh, he's hilarious. You guys, are you sure? Any of you guys envious? You guys, oh, he's going to end up with Jennifer Lopez. Oh, lucky Ralph. <laughs> do Grover all day. No, I'm not going to tell you to do Grover all day, because then, yeah, okay, well, oh, I'm Grover. Oh. Okay, now they are going to get envious. Don't, no, stop it. Knock it off. Knock it off. Don't make them envious. You know, no, careful what you wish for. You just might get it. This woman is obnoxious and annoying. Yes, she's obnoxious and annoying. She's a know-it-all. She's a pain in the ass. She's always, you're not listening to me. You got to do this. She's in your head and your ear all day. Well, she is with me. Not with you. Because, well, okay. So she, yeah, never mind then. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> you're not connected like we are. So leave us alone. This is our movie. Shut up. We're trying to help you. We're sharing our personal life with you to help lead you to peace so you can save yourself from yourself and stop destroying your own world because we love you. No, it's not it's selfish. We're all relatively connected, so obviously it's selfish.
That's a no fucking brainer. You atheists are going to get your asses kicked. <laughs> they already have. I know. They just haven't figured it out yet. I know. <laughs> good God. It's, I know I like having the sarcastic voice. Well, it sounds good when you sit there and do that. I know and that's sarcastic. It just gives you that almost Albert Brooks kind of funny, sarcastic kind of sarcasm to you and stuff like that. It's good delivery. Knock it off. It's funny. It's funny. I'm serious. It's funny. Knock it off. No, it's, if I talk with my Southwest Airlines, this is Earl voice, it just isn't going to come off as sarcastic. And Yeah, it's going to come off more like I'm going to really kick your ass. Oh, yeah, it would. That's sexy. Oh, thank you, baby. I love you, too. Okay, at least she's right. Talk low and slow <laughs> in a tone that, yeah. All right, ladies, what we need to do now is you need to remind your man what real men do. Real men protect women and children, even if it's from themselves, all right? So what you got to do is you got to look your man in the eye and remind him, it's not your gun that saves us, it's you, your intelligence, and your love. Now, if you come up firing off your gun and you kill women and children, you're not a real man. A real man comes home, plays with his kids, exercises with them, keeps them from being obese, trains them to be beautiful, loving, protecting people, but be ready to protect them in adverse conditions as well. Because a real man works all sides of the fence <laughs> and works it right, down all right, like the Oakland Stroke. Oh, good Lord, girl. When you knock it out, what is the Oakland Stroke? The what's practice we can make up our own. God, I love you. Guys, I, um, I don't want to, I'm going to get the high whiny voice. Yes, why? Well, because, uh, uh, this is freaking like worse than Chinese water torture, man. Yeah, it is. They just playing freaking evil, and they like it. The more you whine and complain, the more. Okay, more, more, more separation. <laughs> separation of church and state. Separation of me. I ain't gonna separate me between the dinner plates. Time to go get food. That's right, food. Ding dongs, Twinkies. What else were we gonna get? Pizza. Pistachio ice cream? <laughs> oh, y'all. What kind of sodas can I get? We'll decide when we get in there. Just go straight drunk, straight junk man, right? I get to be straight junky? Yeah, you better live it up now because it's not going to continue once you get home. I know when I get home, no junk food. I know, I know. Max already warned me about it. <laughs> yeah. No, we got to eat like this. What about, okay, Um. I want to go to Grandma Lupe's. No, I want to go to, yeah. Can I go to Mark's house? I want to go to Mark's house. Mark, can I come over with you? In the, okay. She's a tyrant. Hell food nut. Fucking <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> Just kidding. Her. I understand. I understand. A healthy diet. And well, yeah, and if you introduce healthier foods and you put less stuff with less preservatives and things like that, and which are addictive, kids crave healthier foods and crave healthier activities, and, and then their minds work in a more healthy fashion. And mom's going along with this, too. Thanks, Mama Lupe. Okay. But, I mean, if we're going to have real, we can make real ice cream. We can make real homemade ice cream without preservatives and stuff in it. You can. She has a personal dietitian and a personal chef that does this kind of stuff. So the steak and the french fries were, were homemade. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm sitting there thinking, like, you know, stuff like tater tots and shit like that. No, it's real. Okay. Uh, I, steak sounds good. You get, okay. You really hello? That's cool. You, I, I, that is so neat of you. Well, it's because they do it in love. It's a more loving and compassionate way to, uh, yeah, if you're going to sacrifice and give the sacrifice. That's, I agree. You are a sweet woman. God, I like you. Dude, it's good. Okay. I'm not, it's, oh, it's, yeah. Okay, never mind. I got it. Richard, Richard Rockefeller reminded me that the Prime Directive is in effect. It's been in effect since Saturday in the park. <laughs> Why? Because it had to be initiated by the top, oh, me. Yeah, and they had to act so irrational that it would initiate it. And they thought you'd initiate it and then thus eliminating all irrational people like you and yourself. They they were thinking, yeah, they were getting information. They thought you were irrational. They thought you were going to give the sacrifice again. No. No, you, yeah, no, that's not how, no, sacrifice works. No. When you thin the herd, you, you take the, yeah, what, is a, what does a lion do when he's performing the daily sacrifice? You pick off the ones that, yeah, 
do you take on the, no, that'll kill you. Do you take on the ram or the big, no, stupid. <laughs> Why? Because then you trying to go for the biggest and the best, you'll, de you'll de you know, you'll, you know, and you don't, yeah, Virgil Cain. Should have never taken the very best. I need to breed the two best ones in order to get more. It's natural selection, Richard. It's logical. <laughs> Sorry, are you getting it? Yeah, good science is good religion, and good religion is good science. Ah, uh, yeah. And you set yourself up for, yeah, it's natural selection, and you set the prime directive, and you set up the key, and you set up the... You're still not getting it, are you? Rockefellers get it. Well, not all of them. <laughs> the guys in the lion's den didn't get it, and they're trying to sit there and find different ways. They're in their room right now doing prayer and contemplation, and, and it's like, that's not going to work. It has to be real faith. So you're in a constant state of prayer. So you have to think in a human, humanely compassionate and intelligent state of being. You have to totally change your consciousness. It's a complete change of consciousness. That's a, your miracle right there. It's a complete change of consciousness. Marianne Murphy, 101. I know she got it from the Eckhart Tolle card people, but yeah, they don't get it as well as Marianne does. She's the Messiah's mom. <laughs> She's the Holy Grail. <laughs> she gets it. <laughs> She's passing on information to yeah. She's it's yeah it, it, it works real good for you. It's your mom. It's you know he's gonna connect them real. Th My husband is yeah. They always had communication and they always yeah, it's, it's yeah. Me and moms always did and that's why it was different. Why I don't there's something special about that firstborn. It's just I don't know. It's it's described in the Bible. That firstborn boy. He's a special one. You're a miracle child. Yeah, Rebecca's and Jacob's first. I, Jordy knows, <laughs> and he because he doesn't envy his brother at all. He just knows that there's something special about Iko. He loves him. He thinks it's cool. He geeks out on his brother's writings and his math equations and his abilities to analyze things and explain things to me. Just like this, so cool. He does the same thing with Patrick. <laughs> he doesn't. Jacob's the coolest. He doesn't envy at all. <laughs> He's like, well, wow, that's cool. <laughs> oh, Ernst is awesome. Michael Jordan's awesome. He doesn't sit there and go, oh, man, I wish I was him and I'd kill to be him. I can't kill to be him. I'm intelligent. <laughs> just like I'm the same way. I geek out on my, I wouldn't kill to be Michael Jordan. I'd just geek out. That was cool. Like I do with Danny Bennett. Oh, man, that was the shit. That was fun. Do it again. Yeah, me and Jordo both. He gets a lot of that. Well, he connects well to his Uncle Jesus. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, he's related to Jesus. Yeah. Jordan Benegas, yeah, Jesus is his uncle. If he's my uncle, he's his uncle, too. Do you get it? <laughs> oh, I'll we'll be a monkey's uncle. Jordo, you little monkey, knock it off. <laughs> Stop eating the fleas out of Elijah's hair. Knock it off. <laughs> I'm just screwing with you. That's funny, though. I know you like it. I know. I got to go. <laughs> I got to go in there. Um, my eyesight's getting wreaking havoc on this. This one's going a little long, so I got to go, guys. I love you. It's fun, though. Blessings and peace.